children and the children and the children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and the children may his Go before. 
praise you, Jesus, not because of what you've done, Lord, but because of who you are. Hallelujah. Hey, New Hope family, Pastor Dylan here. Thank you so much for worshiping with us online today. At this moment, we're going to give you an opportunity to do one of the most important things that we believe in here at New Hope. We believe in the power of prayer. Why? Because the almighty creator of the universe is giving you an opportunity to have an audience with him, to share your heart, and to see him move on your behalf. He loves you so much and wants to hear from you in whatever you're going through, whether it's a good situation or maybe not so good situation. So at this time, you can either comment right underneath this video in the comment section and have one of our prayer team partners pray with you right there in the chat section, or you can go to EuniceChurch.com, fill out a prayer request form, and that goes directly to our prayer team and to our church staff where we can join our faith with yours and see God move in your situation. Please, we encourage you to take advantage of this opportunity right now. Let me pray for you. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to come before you, to share our heart, to commune with you, and just sit in your presence and see you move on our behalf. God, I pray for every situation represented right now under the sound of my voice, live or later, that you would move, that your will would be done in them, in their family, and in their community. God, we pray that you would do it here again now, in us and through us. In Jesus' name, amen. Be blessed. the chasm that lay between us how high the mountain i could not climb in desperation i turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night and through the Christ, my living hope. That's who you are. Come on, we say, who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? And the God of ages stepped out from glory to my sin and bear my shame. Come on, the cross. The cross has spoken. I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful, beautiful Savior. I'm yours forever. Sing Jesus Christ, my
Come on, give Jesus some praise. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, church, but my favorite part of that whole song, obviously, is the buildup and Jesus won the victory. But it's that one little part where it says, death has lost its grip on me. I don't know if you can tell, but the atmosphere is a little different because there's a bunch of free people up in the house. Come on. Listen, God is good, and that same freedom that people have experienced all weekend is the same freedom that we can live and walk out today, amen? amen. Come on, can we just praise Jesus right now? Lord, we love you, God. Lord, we lift you up right now in the name of Jesus. God, we ask that you would have your way. God, we give you the honor. Lord, we give you all glory. Praise Jesus. We're so thankful that we could be in your house today, God. We're so thankful that we could be in the presence of a living God, of a living King, that we could walk out of here free because of the sacrifice that you made for us on the cross. Lord, we love you. We honor you. We worship you, and we praise you. God, we ask that you would have your way today in this place and have your way in our lives. If you agree with that prayer, can somebody say amen? Come on, give Jesus some praise. Amen. Amen. Thank you again for joining us online. If you appreciate the ministry that goes on here at New Hope, we want to remind you of several different ways that you can worship God with your giving. Number one, you can text to give. All you have to do is enter in the amount that you would like to send and text it to 84321. The second way you can give is go to our website to unischurch.com and click on the giving tab and follow the instructions from there. And finally, you can give by mailing it to the address here at New Hope, 865 Satig Road, right here in Eunice. Or you can stop by during our office hours. Thank you again for worshiping God with your giving. Welcome to our online worship experience. We are so glad that you decided to join us. If it's your first time joining us online or your first time in a long time, we want to invite you to please fill out a connect card. You can do this by going to unishchurch.com. This will help us connect and minister to you and your family the best way that we can. Now, let's take a look at our weekend update. Operation Christmas Child Boxes are due today, so please drop them off at the table in the back of the sanctuary. On Wednesday, the 25th, we want to encourage you to spend time with your family and friends. We will not have services on campus that night. Our production of How Christmas Saved the Grinch will be December 11th through the 14th. Register for tickets online at unishchurch.com. Please check out our Facebook, Instagram, or unishchurch.com for all of our weekly updates and to register for events. Thank you for worshiping with us here at New Joining us for this online only edition of this weekend services. If you can't be here in person, this is why we film. We consider you an extension of our campus, and we are glad that you are tuning in with us today. We are in a series that we will be wrapping up next weekend after Thanksgiving. I do want to remind you that we will not have any activities on campus this Wednesday night. Um, we won't have anything available except for we want you to find a friend, a family member, connect or reconnect to somebody and enjoy that time Wednesday and Thursday as we celebrate this season of Thanksgiving. Uh, in the power of generous, we've really been going over the fact that the most gracious act of all was the act of Jesus giving himself, no greater love have any man than this, than he who would be willing to lay down his life or give for God so loved the world that he gave. So if you're taking notes, this is one of the first things that you can write down. It's not point number one. It's the 
It's the prereq for point number one. I want you to understand that Jesus gave, but he didn't lose. It's important when we, in, when we interpret what generosity really is, it's not that we're just sacrificing or giving up or giving in. It's that we give and we understand that we're giving that in faith. And we can believe for God to reveal and to do with what we gave more than we could have ever done if we would have just held really tightly onto it and not been willing to hand it over. Been greedy with it or selfish with it or hoarded it for ourselves. And that could even be our emotion, our effort, our energy, our salvation, our spirit infilling. It's not about us. It's all about Him. Jesus gave but he did not lose. This is point number one. Jesus won. It's that simple. Jesus won. When he gave, it appeared like he had given it all and he would never get anything back. But we know the outcome of what Jesus accomplished whenever God so loved that he gave. So we believe if he won, and we are in him, then we are joint heirs with Jesus. So here's the point. If Jesus won and we're in him, then we win. Ultimately, eternally, in all aspects of our being. So we never have to fear being generous. In fact, we can engage in generosity, and we can look and see as God reveals its power. In order to understand generosity, I, I think we need to understand blessing. And in order to understand blessing, we need to look at its origin. We see right in the very beginning of Scripture, the Bible says God blessed them. He's talking about Adam and the woman, not Eve, God didn't name her Eve, mother of all the living. Adam named her that. Adam is the one after the sin, after the fall, as a part of the curse, that diminished a woman to strictly finding her identity in only being a mother. Not that it's not an important aspect of your calling, if you're a mother or a grandmother, but it's not your only identity. God said to Adam and the woman, he blessed them. And then he gave them dominion. He said, hey, be fruitful and multiply. And that wasn't just physical, that was spiritual. Multiply the good things of God. Be fruitful in the things that God has for you. And then to rule and to reign. So before the original sin, as we read in our version devotional double blessing just a couple of weeks ago. That's written by Mark Batterson if you want to go back and read that. As we read, before the original sin of man, there was the original blessing of God. Blessing or barak in this context and the original Hebrew is repeated 330 times. It actually means to be a blessing or to bless the one who blesses. So God blessed them. He baracked them. He blessed them to be fruitful, to multiply, to be a blessing, to return that blessing to reciprocate that blessing. And in the New Testament, the predominant use of the word blessing is makarios. And it doesn't mean to just receive or to be happy. It means to be more than happy. That's why Paul was able to write that he recalled Jesus saying. Now this is not in the Gospels, but it's in the book of Acts that Paul records he heard Jesus say, as our Lord says, it is truly more blessed. The blessing of God is tied to the generosity of man. It is truly more blessed to give than to receive. So the power of generous is that God gave and we give that we're blessed to be a blessing 
So that power is in the blessing. And ultimately, if you're hanging in there with me, I know I'm digging a little deeper right out of the gate today. But the ultimate power of the blessing is that we are blessed. Is that God returned us to the original blessing. The beauty of the blessing is that we are saved, we're forgiven, we're redeemed. That's the blessing. And redeemed people redeem people. Blessed people bless people. Forgiven people, let's say it this way, when we are forgiven, we should be forgiving. In every aspect of our lives. Now, Michael Jr., one of my favorite comedians, you can YouTube him if you have no idea who he is. Michael Jr. is, is extremely amusing to me. Um, he's actually very involved in churches and he uses comedy to get people laughing and then integrate scripture and biblical principles. And Michael Jr. said, in regards to giving, he reminds us, that it's truly more blessed to give and to receive. And, and obedience is actually better than sacrifice. As Samuel gave the instruction in the Old Testament to Saul. Obedience is even better than sacrifice. So we always give out of purpose. What is our purpose? Well, our purpose is to see the power of generous. Our purpose is... That forgiven people should be forgiving. So we always give out of purpose, not out of persuasion. And then he says this. I'm not talking about the tithe. I'm going to come back to it today. I haven't even really brought it up a whole lot. Maybe thrown it in quickly before the end of this, within this entire series. Because it's really not about that. But because he says, I'm not even talking about the tithe. The tithe is not giving. The tithe is just not robbing, according to Scripture. If I'm tithing, I'm not really giving. I'm just not being a thief. That is truly my biblical conviction. And I'm not saying that because we're in need as a church. I'm saying that because I truly operate by that biblical principle. Announced in the Old Testament, confirmed in the New Testament, and I still believe applicable in our lives today. I want to look at the difference again in a story of generosity versus story of greed. Genesis chapter 4, verse 6, according to the English Standard Version, The Lord said to Cain, Cain is the brother of Abel, the sons of Adam and the woman, Why are you angry? Why are you angry, Cain? And why has your face fallen? If you do well, if you're generous, if you obey, if you submit your life to me, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin is crouching at your door. It's right there. It's waiting on you to succumb to it instead of your Savior. Its desire is contrary to you, but you must rule. It's the same word, that rada, that God had given to his father, Adam, to rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, all the animals, and all of the earth, to rule. So number two, here's what I want you to learn today. Not only did Jesus win, Jesus won, we win in him. So if we believe that we're in him, we should be like him. So number two... We should give God our best. I want to encourage you. Like right now. We've got about 40 days before the end of the year. And then we start on January 1st. Hey, why wait until January 1st to develop habits that you could form today? Let's take the next 40 days. Why wait until Lent to develop new habits for 40 days that could set the tone for our 2021. We've got about 40 days left in the rest of this year to develop new habits. Developing new habits is going to involve us giving God our best in every area of our lives. 
especially the area where we find the most security and we put the most faith in, which is giving or getting. Having and holding on and finding security in those things or having a habit of generosity. We don't tip God. That's not our best. That's what Cain did. Cain gave some of what he had from his field. He basically gave God his leftovers and called that an offering. That's not an offering. That's a tip. We don't tip God after we're being served. Why? Because God is not our waiter. God is not my waiter. God is my worth. So I give because God is worthy. Not because God is my waiter. Not because he's done, he's doing something for me or I want him to do something else for me. You know what, I'm going to give him a good tip because I really needed to go glass. I'm going to give him a good tip because he, he's doing a good job. No, 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 we don't give to God. We don't give God our best because of what he will do for us. We give God our best because of what he's already done for us. So we tithe 10% before we take anything for ourselves. Well, because God is worthy. God is worthy. When we see the power of generous. We're not obedient because of what God will do. We're obedient because of what he's done and who he is. That's what requires us to give God our best. Now, this is not a... Wave your hanky at me and shout me down kind of a message. This is a message of, of conviction and priorities. Because I'm not going to wait until the first of the year to preach the principle of the first that you need at the end of this year. That we need in this season of Thanksgiving. That we need in order to actually honor Jesus this Christmas in a culture of commercialism and no telling what else will actually be between now and the end of the year we give God our best see a Christian's purpose never changes a Christian's purpose isn't dependent upon what's going on in other places with other people or even all around us Christian's purpose remains the same obedience is greater than sacrifice verse 4 of Genesis chapter 4 Abel also brought an offering. Abel brought the fat portions from some of the first. See, Abel, Abel unlike Cain who brought his leftovers, Abel, bought, Abel brought his best. He brought the fat portions of some of the first born of his flock. And the Lord looked with favor on Abel and his offering. And I just want to leave that up there real quick. I've, I've explained this before. But that word favor in the original Hebrew. That word is sha'ah. Sha'ah. It's like looking at something with awe. God, God looked with. He didn't give Abel favor. And we're about to see what happened to Abel. Because of his offering and Cain's frustration. But God looked with favor. Sha'ah, oh, he looked with favor. It's kind of like, oh, Sha. God looked with favor. I'll give you another example. My children uh, made my mother-in-law some birthday cards. And they all had their different birthday cards. And, and they drew hearts. And, and they wrote her messages. And, and one of the cards opened up. And it had another heart that, that came up out of it. And one of them, or maybe multiple of them, I don't even know who did what anymore, but one of them put money in the card, you know, because that's what you're supposed to do. Because it's not a good card if it doesn't have money in it, right? And so she put some of her own money in the card. And my mother-in-law, they call her Grand. Grand's just, <sighs> she's just looking at the cards and the, the money. And, and my daughter made way more money from Grand because of what she gave. That's, that's how I see the heart of God. Whenever we give him our best, we take the time. It's not much. Like, what do we have to offer God, the creator of the universe? It's not much. 
We're like a kid trying to help, help a daddy get his luggage inside. We're really just in the way. But God just smiles. He looks with favor. Sha'al upon our offering. Sha'al upon our obedience. God looked with favor upon Abel's offering. But Abel's offering or his obedience ultimately cost him his life. Abel's obedience cost him his, his life. And I know how this message goes. Like it causes people to shift in their seat. It causes people to stir in, in discomfort. Because some people I've had conversations with. Chris, you don't understand. If I start tithing, I start supporting missionaries on my own. I start giving above and beyond in offerings, not just 10%, but 12 or 20. And I begin to give sacrificially in offerings that actually cost me something, not just out of my abundance, but in, in what's available, not just as a tip after I've already been served, but as a tithe before I spend a, 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 a nickel. Before I take anything, I, I'm tithing. Chris, you don't understand what that's going to cost me. No, I understand it's going to cost you your life. You don't understand, Chris, like, I'm going to have to change everything. Yeah, I know. I, I know. That's what the power of generous is. That you crucify your flesh. That you die to yourself. That's what the Christian walk is all about. Man, if I serve on this team, you guys get here at 6.30 on Sundays. Man, I, I don't know if you know this, but I work all week. I'm, I don't know what you do all week. But, I, man, I'm going to I'm gonna have to change what we do on Saturdays. Like, my Sunday's not even going to be the same. Yeah, I know. I know. If I co-lead this small group next semester, man, if I, if I open my home to, to a freedom group or a small group, man, I, I'm going to have to come home and, and clean up instead of just getting to relax. Like, this is really, it's a, you're asking a lot of me, pastor. I know. I know. It's going to cost you something. Chris, if I start giving to God first, I'm going to have to reprioritize my entire budget. I'm going to have to have a budget. Yeah, I know. You're going to have to make sure that God is first priority in every aspect of your life. That's what he's requiring of us. That is what he is calling us to. Just as Abel gave an offering. And God looked with favor upon that offering because he was really looking with favor upon Abel's obedience. I'll give you an example. I know a story of a single mom. She needed some help, and we helped her. But then we also challenged her with the obedience to God's word, specifically in the area of giving God your best, your first, and starting with 10%. And she had to sell her vehicle and get a different vehicle. She, I, I'm going to have to sell this car. Yeah, you may have to sell that car. But I can promise you, you'd rather drive a used vehicle than rob from God. And not properly prioritize his provision. Because that's what it is. That's what we're working with down here. We're working with his provision. Every dime, every dollar that I have is because of God's sovereignty and God's generosity. Well, I'll work hard for that. Yeah, but you don't get to work if God removes your ability to. It's all because of him. And so here's number three today. I need you to understand that the first 10% is best. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about the first 10%. Now, your, our mind is automatically, our mind automatically goes to finances. Why? Because that's what we're most offended by. It's like, oh, he's asking for my money again. No, I'm asking for you everything again. I'm talking about the first hour of your day. There's a really great book out. It's specifically written uh, for men predominantly. Uh, the Promise Keepers promoted this. The guy's name is Mark Koch. She calls it the first hour. And he's talking about a time tithe. I'm talking about a Sabbath on a weekly basis. That you don't try to work seven days a week and think that it's honorable because you can get more done in seven than God can use you to do in six. I'm talking about taking a day to stop work, enjoy rest, practice delight, and contemplate God. 
And if you need to stop this right now and rewind that to define your Sabbath, you're supposed to stop work, enjoy rest, practice delight. So coming to church and serving at church, if you could find delight in it, that could actually be part of your service. Some people like to mow their yard because they like it's relaxing for them. I stay as far away from a lawnmower as possible on my Sabbath. That's the beauty of what God has done, the fulfillment of the New Testament. What was law in the Old Testament has now been fulfilled and it's extended into every area of our lives. So we're no longer bound, bound by it, we're delivered by it. That's what Jesus did. So your Sabbath is your Sabbath. You stop work, enjoy rest, practice delight, and contemplate God. Get a journal and write down what God did. Form new habits, 40 days, to acknowledge who God is. The first 10% is your best in your time, in your day. As a side note, quickly, let me just say, it doesn't have to be at 5 o'clock in the morning. If you're not a, a, a 5 o'clock in the morning type, if you're more of the nighttime type, and I got good news for you. The Bible says that it was evening and morning the first day. As Americans, we consider morning to evening a day. When the sun comes up, that's the beginning of the new day, right? Matt? Not according to Judaism. According to Judaism, when the sun sets, that's the beginning of the new day. So if you're a nighttime person, give God your time tithe at night. If you're a morning person, give him your time tithe in the morning. If you're neither one like me, you just like to sleep. Then give God a little bit at night, give God a little more in the morning, and then find some time throughout the day to spend some moments with him. Praying without ceasing. Now listen, when I say that you're supposed to tithe your best, I don't mean that you just get to do whatever you want to with the rest. That's not obedience either. That's not good stewardship. It means that you give God your best. Write this down if you need to. It's not in your notes. Give God your best, and then you let God guide the rest. But God's not guiding anything if you're not giving anything. He's not going to guide what you're not giving. So you give God your best and then you let him guide the rest. It's not, you don't just get to give God 10% and then do whatever you want to and God show up and bail you out of your bad budget. That's not what we're talking about. God can't save you from your lack of stewardship. But he can guide you when you give your best. And I believe that that starts, it just starts, it begins with 10%. Why do I believe that? Well, let's look at the scripture, Genesis chapter 14, verse 17. We're talking about Abram. Abram was blessed by God. Verse 17 of Genesis 14, I'm reading from the English Standard Version. Then after his return from the defeat of Kedor Laomer. Now, I don't really know how to pronounce that that well, but I spelled it out phonetically. I spelled it out in my notes, phonetically, I think is the word that I'm looking for in order to properly pronounce it. And now I've wasted 20 seconds on somebody's name that I'm not even talking about. The kings who were with him, the king of Sodom, went out to meet him at the valley of Shiva. That is the king's valley. And this one's fun. And Melchizedek, he's important. He's the one that we wanted to point out. King of Salem... He brought out communion. He brought out New Testament imagery. He brought out bread and wine. He's pointing to Jesus. The bread of life. The blood. And the remission of our sins. The Bible says he was priest of God Most High. So he was a king of Salem. And a priest of God Most High. He was king and priest. This man is a type of Jesus, the Son of God, King and Priest in the New Testament. Verse 19, And Melchizedek blessed him and said, watch this, he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram by God Most High, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be God Most High, Barak, 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 blessed to be blessed, blessed to bless, Blessing the one who blesses. Do you see this? It's all principally laid out in scripture for us. Blessed be God most high. Who has delivered your enemies into your hands. And then the Bible says. And Abram gave him a tenth of everything. Everything he had. 
I want you to notice, Abram didn't give to be blessed because Melchizedek had already blessed him. We don't give because of what God will do. Although we believe he'll do great things. He'll open up the windows of heaven, pour out blessing we can't contain, rebuke the devourer on our behalf. The righteousness of God will go before us and his glory will be our rear guard. We have promises. We have double blessing promises and double portion promises throughout scripture. But that's not why we give. We give because of what God already did. We give because God gave his only begotten son. We're blessed because we're redeemed. We're redeemed because he saved us. And because he gave for us. Because Jesus won, we win. Abram gave a tenth of everything. He didn't give to be blessed. He gave out of already being blessed. What he did was he decided not to rob this man's rightful portion. Who was a representation of God in the Old Testament. We let God, we give the first, give the first 10%. Of our finances. Why? Because that's what we put the most faith in. Where your treasure is, there your heart shall be also. Freely you received, freely give. It's more blessed to give than to receive. But remember, and I'm with Michael Jr. I don't believe that tithing is even giving. Tithing is just not being a thief. Tithing is just not robbing God. The 10% is where it begins. That's just the beginning. And that's why Jesus said, if we can't trust you with unrighteous mammon, if you can't be trusted with unrighteous mammon or money, materialism, possessions, if you can't be trusted with temporary things, then how could you ever be trusted with heaven's treasure, with true treasure, people, souls, lives for the sake of the kingdom of God, the gospel that Jesus paid for with his own life. How could you ever be trusted with these things? Cain's greed put him in a curse. You remember Cain? His greed, just giving God his leftovers. That put him in a curse. Hey, can I? God is not cursing your relationships in 2020. Our selfishness curses our relationships. Our greed. Our irritation, our offense, our bitterness, that's what curses. Our lack of forgiveness, that curses our relationships. God is not cursing your happiness in 2020. No, no, no. Our willingness to choose, our unwillingness to choose joy despite what's going on. Our unwillingness to choose Jesus who is our joy. That's what's cursing our happiness. God is not cursing your love life. No, no, no. Our impurity curses our our intimacy. With him. With our spouse. Possibly with your potential spouse or a significant other. It's impurity that's cursing intimacy. It's not God that's cursing your intimacy or your love life. It's the fact that we think we can do everything else like everybody else and then add in marriage at the last minute and expect it to be blessed. You can't live outside of covenant and commit to covenant. You've got to choose. You can't have both. God's not cursing our finances. No, our unwillingness to establish a budget curses our finances. Our lack of discipline in regards to stewardship curses our finances. The fact that we spend everything, spend on anything and everything else and then give God whatever we have left. That's what's cursing. It's our greed, our overspending, our putting ourselves in debt. That's a curse on our finances. God is not going to take control unless we give him control. And we're not giving him control when he's not our priority. That's what the curse is. God's not cursing our health. Our gluttony is. Our cancerous foods are. Our lack of exercise. Godliness is better, but physical health is important. We've got to take care of ourselves. It's not God's cursing. 
It's our inability to receive and reciprocate God's blessing. But, and this is the title of the message today, by the way. But watch what happens when the heart meets the habit. When the heart meets the habit. See, we stand in retrospect. We stand having seen what Abraham was believing for. What Abraham could only hope for, which was the fulfillment of, the, of his faith. We've already seen the fulfillment of faith. All we have to do is put our faith in him. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 4. Consider how great this Melchizedek was. That even Abraham, the great patriarch of Israel, recognized this by giving him a tenth of what he had taken in battle. We fight not as though we beat against the air. No, no, no. We have a purpose. We have a purpose. Our purpose is generosity and the power of God. Jump down to verse 15 in Hebrews 7. This change has been made very clear since a different priest. One who is like Melchizedek has appeared. Verse 16, Jesus became a priest and not by meeting the physical requirement of belonging to the tribe of Levi, but by the power of a life that cannot be destroyed. Verse 17, and the psalmist pointed this out when he prophesied, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. This has not changed. Jesus fulfilled the requirements of the Old Testament. So that we could even greater works than these, he said, should we do. So that we could expand what was formerly bondage is now part of what helps us believe. Not sin in the law, but the fulfillment thereof. That Jesus came in the order of Melchizedek. You remember I said a minute ago, it, it, it's not... It's not God that's cursing our finances. It's our lack of priority. How many things do we have on auto pay or just drafted out of our accounts? How many bills are on auto draft? They just come right out of our accounts. And yet, I haven't looked. I have no idea. But how many of us Have Jesus, our tithe, our 10%, our offerings, above and beyond just not being a thief. How many of us have that on auto draft? How many of us have that set up every month so that we know we're not going to steal from God? If it was important in scripture to note that Abram gave a tenth of his best to Melchizedek. Then guys, how much more important is it that we give the first at least 10%? Just start with 10%. Test God in this. In our finances, in our faith, in our family, in our treasure. Absolutely. Why? Because that's what we put the most stock in. In our talent, our giftings, our abilities. We're giving our best to God. And then we let him guide the rest to everybody else. Even in our time, as we wrap up the end of 2020, and what a year it's been. We got 40 days to let our heart meet our habits instead of letting our habits follow our heart because the human heart is deceitfully wicked above all things. So we're going to reestablish new habits we're going to watch what happened when our heart catches up to those biblical principles and those biblical habits. And we give God the first, beginning with 10%. And then we let him begin to give purpose as he reveals his provision when we properly prioritize. How much more important, if Abraham gave to Melchizedek a type of Jesus, is it that we give, truly give to Jesus himself? Beginning with, just beginning with, the first 10%. When I give, I'm not just obeying the law, I'm fulfilling the law. 
when I give, I'm not just giving to Jesus. I'm becoming like Jesus. Because God so loved that he gave. I am aligning myself in the order of Melchizedek, just like Jesus did. Just like Abraham did. I am aligning myself in the order of that priesthood and kingship. I become joint heirs in the promise of Abraham, the blessing of Abraham, the multiplication of Adam, the original plan of God. I even become joint heirs with Jesus himself because I'm not just giving to him. I am literally being obedient to becoming like him. This is not about sacrifice. It's just about obedience. Because God is honored when we become like his son. I want to invite you to bow your head and close your eyes. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, before he wants anything in an offering, he wants you as an offering. If you haven't completely surrendered every corner of your spirit to him, today is your day. If you're a follower of Jesus, these principles apply to you. I can't even hurt your feelings with this because the Holy Spirit's already been convicting you of this. But if you're not following Jesus, he's asking you today. He's offering you the opportunity today to surrender your life to him. To offer your body a living sacrifice. And then you'll know what his will is for your life. Will you give your life to Jesus? Will you fully surrender? Would you commit or really commit your life to him? And then never take it back again. I want to invite you right where you are to close your eyes and open your hands. And we believe in the power of confession. Saying with your mouth. Confessing with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believing with all of your heart. And you can receive salvation right now. Come on, would you pray this prayer with us today? Say it with me. Jesus, forgive me where I've fallen, for my greed, my disobedience. That's sin. It separates me from you. I don't want to be separated. I want to know you. I believe you died on the cross and you paid for my sin. And you were raised from the dead. So I could be born again. Made new like you. So I surrender. Take my life as an offering. Make it yours. May I follow you with all of my heart from this day forward. And never look back, but fix my eyes upon you, the author and the perfecter of my faith. I give you my best in every area, in Jesus' name, amen. Hey, if you prayed that prayer for the first time or the first time in a long time, please let us know. Text, I believe, to 845 Seven six. I believe to 84576. One of our staff members or our office will get in touch with you. We want to send you a resource. We want to connect with you. And we want to know what God is doing in your life. If you're new with us, please go to EuniceChurch.com. You can find out a lot more about us there. You can fill out a connect card right there online. Or you can email info at EuniceChurch.com. You can fill out a prayer request. You can email us your prayer request. And we will send that out and make sure that God and his people are covering you in prayer. Hey, God bless you. Before you go today, listen to just a few more announcements that we have for you. God bless and have a great week.